Hello, YouTube viewers. Welcome to my channel, Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about mass transit mistakes. So let's dive deep into it. Now, whenever we are talking about mass transit, we first have to understand what the heck it is. It's a basically a system that allows a lot of people to be concentrated in small space. Uh, basically, when you have very high density of population, not the grand total population, but the density of people is too high, then we need this sort of system. Because again, people are not just people. They are not electric bulbs or something like that. They move around from A to B. And this is, we are talking about generally inside the town itself. In those sort of scenarios, cities, towns, whatever have you, you need a good way of fast safe and efficiently traversing around the town from A to B uh, to B to C whatever you have to do you should be able to do it fast safe and efficiently efficiently being it should not cost too much energy one way or the another it does not matter whether energy comes from coal or it does not matter it comes from diesel whatever have you so that's the core aspect of it and why don't we just use car? Well, the reality is if we use cars, all of us are after to use it, it will clog up the streets and it's already happening everywhere in the world where you, wherever you have enough people and enough car ownership, you're reaching a point where traffic simply cannot move. Like I was living in uh, basically India's Silicon Valley. That was like uh, five, six years ago, Bangalore. And that party, like I was stuck on traffic for around one hour per day. As in like, even though I was moving, but the movement speed was so slow. Everybody can move, but traffic is one of those things. Unless we have automated car, we really cannot move a lot of people through it. So fundamentally, everything was like slow, sluggish and choke point. And God help you in the rainy seasons. So, and that's, a, that's the good it is. Now I'm hearing some horror stories that people are constantly without any uh, like very variation. They are wasting two hours per day, one way. Like four hours a day, they are going poof on the traffic itself. So that's a very serious scenario where you need to have mass transit system. Otherwise, you have to reduce the number of people concentrated in one place. So cars are not the solution. So what are the tool set that we have? We have buses, we have trams, we have metro, we have streetcars, whatever have you. So that's the whole point. These puppies allow you to uh, alleviate congestion and allow rapid movement reliably with like safe, efficient manner. That's the whole point of it, mass transit. This is from Kanpur Metro. Uh, thankfully, I had the luxury to actually go there and visit this. It's completely empty right now. <laughs> it's like completely empty. So the first vector that you have to always understand is cost. These things cost too much money, as in idiotically large amount of money, as in aircraft carrier will look cheap. I'm not even making that up. Aircraft carrier will look cheap. Please Google what is the debt of uh, basically New York Metro. Just good luck. So that's the whole point. It takes serious amount of money. It's not something, you, oh, there is a lot of population, we should do it. If it's a poor area where they do not have enough tax collection, where they do not have enough economic movement, they will not do it. Even if it will benefit it, they will not do it simply because they could not afford it. And reality is on paper, everybody designs the system in such a way where it's like, oh, we're going to do this. We're going to have this sort of ticker cost. We're going to make this much money out of it. Outcome is best case scenario in majority of the situation, you will not be running in low as in red. But the reality is you should minimum be able to take care of the running cost uh, of interest. Capital, God help you, that capital will slowly go into your national debt and it will be forgotten about. It will be never be paid off. So if you ever wonder where the heck these national debts are coming from, that's where they're coming from. Like, of course, they are not the only major contributors, but they are some big daddy contributors. So you have to understand, these are very serious drain. And if you are risking it, like let's say a state or a district or whatever have you, you have large amount of people, you are risking this puppy, you have to be very mindful. If this puppy fails, uh, you are creating what we call debt crisis. What does that mean? That simply means money have to be reallocated from other places. Well, like road, electricity, water, sewage, all of these things can lose their funding simply because you had one project that failed. That's why, uh, you know, failure projects are not just uh, a danger to themselves. Like, uh, oh, this metro project failed. That's not a big deal. No, no, no. It will drain money from all other things because central government does not have magical money where they can just print it out. And if they did magically print it out, it will just become debt. So it's one of those things that you have to understand. The cost of these things are bonkers. So it has to be done carefully and planned carefully. There are only a few metro system on the planet that has actually running on green. And I do not mean green as in like they paid off their uh, principal, they paid off their interest and their running costs, they are still in profit. Very few, very few, like surprisingly few. I, I used to think like, oh, only one or two metro lines would be like, you know, in red. It's like, nah, bro, <laughs> nah. So 
it's one of those things and cost is a limiting factor of everything whenever you see a metro station it's like hey train is not very long like again this is india so it's designed for india so most of them are at least four coaches or six coaches long you may have a scenario where it's like dude why the heck everything is like you know only two coaches even though you are seeing a lot of people crammed in there because if they had two coaches the stations would be smaller station would be smaller that simply means if especially if it's underground it would be cheaper so they may have been like cost limited even though people are uh, like you know a lot of people overcrowding is happening they, that was the easiest way to deal with that so they may have thought like hey we're gonna have more trains hopefully alleviating congestion but that may have backfired so it's one of those things the money is the most important part everything that you see in any mass transit system money is the reason why it's there if you see uh basically cost is a limiting factor and the worst uh, offender so to say is bus rapid transit system or brt now brt is one of those things that gives the illusion that is cheap it's actually not that cheap it's cheap compared to metro that's absolutely true but it's not cheap cheap it's not like ah, i can do it on site no 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 and that's the primary reason why brt has such a bad reputation everybody did uh, took brt because of cost cutting and then, then they cut costs from it and then they're like oh, why the heck it's not working you compromised it that's why so, for example, I'll give you a simple way. Uh, Bangalore, uh, Bangalore does not have BRT, but Ahmedabad, uh, it's a capital city of uh, Gujarat, it has BRT. Now, what they have done, many things they got right. For example, they have stations, as in like platforms that are for bus. It's not just like a stall with, with no, it's completely enclosed. So, if rain or very high summer, it's completely enclosed area. Awesome. GG. Then they have bus, elevated area, everything. GG. Awesome. And then the area basically the bus area it's a very uh, differently marked and it's not for other traffic but it still goes through the normal traffic now that's has its own pros and cons if you go through the own traffic cost goes down consequence it's not reliable and every mass transit system is only as good as is a reliability you can have the best train in the world but if it's not reliable it's not running on schedule and specifically if people are not trusting that puppy nobody's gonna use it Many systems have failed because of that and nobody could understand it until they did like, you know, thorough investigation. It's like, dude, the system is awesome. Why the heck nobody's using it? Yeah, some people came in the early days and then it, it was off time or they missed something important. They're never going to touch it. And that has happened. So it's one of those things. BRT suffers seriously for that because they will have a bus and the bus will go through basically normal traffic. Consequence, normal traffic can jam up. So you will be like, lol. So bus rapid transit systems suffer worsely because it's like it gives the illusion it's cheap. It's like, no, you still need to make a road for it. Ideally. Now, thankfully, you can only build one lane road and you're going to have much higher throughput than any other car lane. You're going to have exponentially higher capacity of here and there and fuel consumption would be low. So it's awesome system, but you, you cannot do too much cost cutting. Then we have buyout cost cutting can make what we call debt trap. That's why whenever you see this sort of projects going on and even though they are soaring budgets are happening, they never can cancel it truly. Because if they flat out cancel it, you have nothing. You just have, oh, I have 60,000 crore rupee debt or like, you know, hundreds and millions of dollars of debt or $2 billion debt. That's why I said these things make aircraft carrier look cheap. So this is one of those very serious aspects. It's like money is very serious here and somebody has to know it has to manage it wisely if they cut from the wrong place they can compromise the whole system and that's why uh, basically metro systems specifically are done in phases phase one phase two phase three because nobody can directly bear that sort of cost even though doing that will improve ridership it will directly help everywhere but nobody can afford it so that's a very serious reality that you have to understand cost is critical here then we come to the scheduling part now this is the most small detail that you will never notice but it's it's one of those things that it can subtly make your system or subtly break it's your system for example you are moving people you're not moving goods goods would be like hey i'm shipping this puppy to that puppy in this time so let's say i'm shipped on uh, date one it should be there on date three nobody cares how the heck it goes there like oh it moves in the morning then waits in a platform for too long nobody cares it's just like tick. All you have to ma matter is like starting date and end date. But people are not like that. People are like, people have their flow. They have their own ecosystem. For example, I get up in the morning. I went to the office in the morning. Then I came in the evening. Then I maybe I wanted to go to some shops or parking area. Then I needed to transport again. So people have different movements and you have to accommodate that. It's not good. So it's like, hey, I give you one train from A to B. It's like, no, it has to be on my time, my requirement time. So you basically have to flow with public's flow. For example, uh, many of the metro stations shut down at a very, very weird times. For example, they will shut down at 10 p.m. But if city has a very bright, uh, you know, nightlife, so to say, 
like the amount of traffic that happens simply because of nightlife it could have been avoided if metro were like hey at night we're gonna give service only difference between service will not be very quick for example let's say normal peak time is five minutes between trains you can make it 15 minutes between trains but you can at least remove all those drunk people from streets and without crowding the streets everybody wins but nope timing is not uh, like time has rigid it's like from 6 p.m uh, 6 a.m to 10 p.m i'm like are people actually following that? You could have a weird scenario where it's like everybody is using it in morning and it's not early enough. You have to change the schedule. If you don't, you can break the system. It's one of those weird things where it's like on paper every day, hey, dude, we have train connection here. If somebody says, no, it's like there is a train connection but nobody uses, I can guarantee you there's a very good reason for that. And most likely the reason has to do with schedule. Is it on actually useful time? If it's not on useful time, there is no point. So demand, like think of it this way, like this is a metro line, this is the road, this is a long exposure photo. So much vehicle move traffic is happening. If the metro was active at that time, it would have turned out differently. So ideal is 24 into 7, but of course, you, nobody can truly do it. It will cost too much. But uh, aim, goal is try to get as close as possible. Of course, you will have your main peak time, which you will align based on your traffic analysis. Based on that, you will fine tune it. And then you're going to have like, hey, 15 minutes, maybe at late night, one hour gap between that. But it would be something that if somebody is stranded somewhere or they had to do late night work, which I used to do in game artist. Uh, like one time I literally left office at 12.30 p.m. Oh no, AM, 12.30 AM. So it's one of those things. In those sort of time, you'll be like, shut up, take money. Even if you charge double, people will pay for it. So that's why it's one of those things. Schedule has to be aligned to people. People will not align themselves according to this. Of course, you are poor, you will align yourself to this, but most people won't. So that's the reality of it. Schedule is one of those little things. If they break it, yeah, everything is working fine. Just schedule is wrong, nobody is using it. Then we come to mix up part because of the cost, the enormity of this project scale. Many times, many modes of transport has been mixed together. They made a hybrid baby. Basically, Metro made love to tram. So, and tram made love to dedicated railway. And uh, like, you know, Metro and tram, they're getting to know each other kind of situation. So many times they have been mixed together for budgetary reason. Prime reason is always budget. Uh, but you have to be mindful of that because for example brt again is the easiest example if it ha does not have dedicated lane separation it's 100 percent useless especially in a place where it has bad traffic congestion nobody will use brt so brt will just become a money sink and then people are like oh what was the point you wasted so much money it's like it needed its own quote unquote tracks if it had its own track fine smooth don't worry about it Everybody enjoys it. There are There is one town that got that so right, Like, but thankfully they planned the whole city. The city was a, basically an establishment. They planned it from day one and they had BRT built into it. So it was surprisingly amazing how many people were like, dude, this is awesome. Why the heck every place has a, does not do that? Because everybody's like, oh, BRT is cheap. That means I can make it even cheaper. No, you don't. You never cut the cost on like dedicated lane separation. If this puppy fails, BRT is a useless. It's just a bus service that is unreliable. So that's there. Then we have trams. Sometimes uh, you have a place which has enough uh, income, as in like GDP wise, uh, but it does not have enough need or it does not have that kind of money. So they're like, hey, we want a tram, a metro system. It would be awesome, but we can't afford it. Put everything underground or things of that nature. It will be too expensive. Okay, what is the next best thing? Next best thing is basically we're gonna have a tram, but they're like, hey, trams goes through traffic. So it has traffic dependency. But what if we have some more money we make it dedicated. Basically, at this point in time, even though it is a tram, it may have some stops that are like, you know, in outer area where you have very, very minimal traffic. You will have like, you know, grade crossing. But most places is just like a normal train system. Now you have a metro system that has the capacity of higher than bus. You can have like two or three X of the bus capacity and it's reliable. This is the most critical. Scheduling can be very high throughput, meaning every few minutes uh, buses are coming. So this many places have worked amazingly well. People are like, whoa, the system did not cost too much, but it was, of course, it was not cheap, but it was not like, whoa, I'm going bankrupt kind of expensive, but it's like, hey, it's working. People are actually not using their cars, which is the end game. Now, if not done correctly, basically like mixing a metro with tram system, you may end up scenario of worst of all. Why? Uh, metro, you already paid for it. It's too expensive. Okay. You still did metro, but you're like, hey, I saved money by not doing it 100%. Here's the deal. If you do it 100%, you get 100% of the uptime, meaning it's reliable, it's countable, people can trust on it. But if you had metro, now you're dependent on traffic. Depending on your location, you have to know that 
beforehand you have to because be mindful these sort of project could take years so you have to know beforehand that 10 years from now people, car ownership will be down or uh, not going up or at least stay the same because if it goes up that whole idea of like having a metro then having a tram in expensive areas yeah it will backfire because again metro won't be reliable because the moment it goes to tram traffic jam is happening stuck so it's one of those things mixing up is a very clever act it has to be done by a proper chemist if not done properly yeah you you will have something that looks amazing you even make a, you know fortunes uh, creates a very good buzz around the city but it won't be viable so mixing up is also something that has to be done with extreme caution then we come to the most difficult thing that is connectivity now this is the part where you have to understand close enough does not work in metro flat out it cannot be close enough now tokyo is given as a perfect example for that why uh, people who designed this ecosystem they realized few things very early on like back in the days like very early on as in like uh, india's independence time around 75 years ago uh, the idea was like we had capital the capital had railway station back then railway station was very, like it was the life blood blood at that point in time we did not had airports that had that kind of throughput so railway station things started to grow around it now here's the as population grew again india grew in population bit exponentially so we st city started to grow like delhi started to grow now delhi is hundreds of square kilometer area like it's huge freaking huge so you may have a scenario where your central location is here but you are living here and that could be multiple hours away using a road that's not a good that's not a good that's not useful scenario so what people uh, in japan did when they were designing tokyo they realized that people want to come from other places like let's say they are they have a village nearby to tokyo they want to come from there okay they have a good rail, railway network that can bring people reliably efficiently fast enough awesome let's say that's barely 30 minutes of travel people will do that but here's the deal. what do they do once they get it to tokyo this is where their genius was hey what if we have hundreds and thousands of interconnect meaning you can change here you can change here you can change here you can change here you can swap it what does that mean that simply means you may not even enter the uh, central city and you're like hey i'm coming from here yet i'm here done and this is so amazing from a city's point of view meaning you can actually access any place from anywhere because you can just jump the line and this is very critical and they made sure this things is interconnected with you know larger infrastructure as in uh, bus networks tram networks and uh, you know interstate uh, train networks it's linked up with everything including airports so you can come from anywhere like basically somebody from nearby village can come to deep tokyo and get your or directly outside of office directly without ever touching a road or a car it will be like, hey i came from a train like of course hopefully his home is close to railway station he goes to the station travels for 30 minute jumps off from one platform to another platform again you are not changing mode here you are going to another metro that metro drops you night next to your office it's awesome if you ever wondered how the heck tokyo has this sort of population density on a dying country that country has very tiny population and shrinking how the heck they still have super high population density in tokyo itself this is the reason this is the primary reason why it's there if you remove this system next day nobody will be able to move from a to b and the whole business will stop people will move out so if you ever see growth of people is linked with metro that's the reason for that you cannot move that many people in small area using cars so and then we come to the critical aspect of stops whenever you see the quote unquote stops these always have to be what we call easy walk what does that mean of course depending on the population depending on population health average life expectancy and all that jazz you will calculate how far people are comfortably able to walk meaning let's say i can walk comfortably for 10 minutes but that's a high 5 minutes let's just say so you can walk comfortably for 5 minutes you must make sure the metro station is next to all hot spots in 5 minute radius it has to be just like hey i walk for 5 minutes get to a metro uh, drop off at the hot spot walk 2 minutes there then i will use it but if it's like you know i have to walk 20 minutes then uh, sit on the metro then walk another 20 minute i'm not doing that i'm getting on my car that's why that's why this interconnect matters so much so you have to make sure everything is in easy walk range it's very difficult and if not planned correctly it may be just a it utter waste of money but it has to be done and poor ridership many times directly come from not having proper connection meaning indian metro for example there is a place uh, which is very uh, populated and very important calcutta now calcutta has a howrah station that is the most important railway station like hundreds and thousands of train come there like every year and let's not even talk about the amount of people that come in and out of there here's it there's a calcutta metro awesome they are not interconnected 
what the hell they are not interconnected like the two arteries are not interconnected it's like what the hell who designed this and this is the most amazing part of tokyo system it's designed such a way that every artery is connected to smaller veins you can directly go to exactly where you need to like come to from different place to here and almost get next to your hotel and delhi has learned from it and again more and more uh, basically metro stations that are built in india is starting to connect basically airport to railway stations so once you connect these two outer hubs now you can just think of it this way you dropped from your plane directly you can go almost next to your hotel or your home directly without uh, changing the mode of transport you never have to book a taxi it's efficient so connectivity matters a lot railway airport terminals these sort of connectivity interconnectivity intermodal connectivity like a railway or maybe you have a ferry service you may want to connect it that so all these connection turbo charges every other thing so that's why maybe think of it this way like you have this sort of system and you are living in a like you know fridge apartment where it's the size of a fridge you are living there you may have a place you, you are making a lot of money and you're like hey i can't afford really anything practically in uh, tokyo but i can afford something that is outside you bought that and you just go there every friday night it's like bro i'm going there i'm gonna have good weekend and then i'm coming here it's like it can be done people have done that so connectivity matters far more than you think it cannot be just like oh it's an isolated system the more you connect it the more utilization you're gonna get the more likelihood that it's gonna be a profitable system or at least not in red so that's the another aspect many times system fails simply because they do not have good connectivity so this was the reason why many mass transit system fail they do not account for all these factors or account for it poorly so this was my presentation on basically uh, mass transit system. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please hit the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike. Press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.